welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Katie and I am probably more excited for this video than I've ever been for any video on my channel because today's video is a witchy DIY video and I have been obsessed with all things Halloween and fall this year but mainly Halloween and the witchy vibe is definitely what I'm going for. So I really hope that you guys will like these. I tried to make these really easy and inexpensive. The items for these DIYs can be found at Dollar Tree with a few exceptions thrown in. I try to keep my DIYs as affordable and easy as possible, but sometimes you do need like an extra something here or there from another store. But anyway, I think that's all for the intro. Thank you all so much for watching. Let's go ahead and get right into this video. For this first DIY, I'm going to be making a spell book. So for this, I just got one book from Dollar Tree, some foam letters from Dollar Tree, and then just some random plastic knickknack Halloween items also from Dollar Tree. I have some spiders, some bats, some skeletons, and these are going to be used to decorate your book. So it really depends on how you want the book to look on what items that you should pick up. So the first thing that I did was adhere these foam letters onto the book and they do have like a sticky back on them so I didn't use need to use the hot glue gun for those and after I had those placed where I wanted them then I went on to using the other little items that I had from the Dollar Tree the little spiders and skeletons and decorated the book that way. Here's a look at the book after I had all of the items placed how I like them. And it does say spells on the front. The L and the S were black so you can't see it very well. But it doesn't matter what color you use because you will be painting over this anyway. The next step is to completely cover the front and back covers of the book with a damp paper towel. So um, I made a mistake and I accidentally spray painted my book first but you don't need to do that. Um, because you will be painting over the paper towel after it was dry, after it is dry. So you do want your paper towel to be not soaking wet, just a little bit wet, and then um, use that to cover the front and the back of the book, and then paint over the entire front and back covers with quite a lot of Mod Podge. And this is just going to give the book more of like a old and weathered wrinkled look so you don't want this to be completely perfect up against your project at all you want it to have some character to it and then the next step is what's going to take the longest and that is just low allowing the book to dry I put mine outside because it was sunny and that can speed up the process a little bit but you want to make sure that this is fully dry before you move on to the next step next I spray painted the book with matte black spray paint and that was after the paper towel was completely dry and then I went over the details of the book with a little bit of rub and buff and you really only need a little bit the stuff is pretty potent and goes a long way so I watered mine down a little bit and then I traced over the letters and also the detailing on the book um, I have a bat on my book and a little hand and I wanted those to pop and stand out. This doesn't need to be perfect because you want it to look like a spell book. And here is the completed book. I am obsessed. I think it looks like something from Harry Potter and it is just so cool. For this next DIY, you're going to need a glass vase from Dollar Tree, also a plastic skeleton from Dollar Tree. These come on a garland and you can just cut off one if you only want to use one of them and then um, also some jute rope or twine. Then the first step is to hot glue the jute rope around the top of the vase and also use some hot glue to adhere the skeleton to the side of the vase. Next I coated this with a couple of coats of matte black spray paint. You can use the same as what you use for the book if you're making both of these projects. After that, I added some accents onto the skeleton and also the rope using the rub and buff and I just went sparingly on this because like I said, a little bit goes a long way and um, it just gives it a little bit more of like a spooky, rustic type of look. And here is the completed look. For this next DIY, I'm going to be making a cauldron. So I picked up a plastic cauldron from Dollar Tree and I wanted to give this like a used look, grungy kind of if that makes sense. So the first thing that I did was mix some oatmeal and 
Elmer's glue and a little bit of water together to kind of, to create a paste and then I mushed this all around the outside of the cauldron and I took this outside to dry as well. Basically you just want to get it somewhere where it's going to dry quickly because part of the problem is some of the oatmeal can slide off of this but if that's happening I think that you just need to add a bit more glue and less water to the mixture so you play around with it until you get a good consistency in order for it to stick without sliding. Once the oatmeal had dried onto the cauldron then I went over the bumped up areas with some light brown and some dark brown to give it a bit of dimension and texture and I think that this turned out so cool. It was really easy, super inexpensive and just looks so much better than the typical plastic cauldron. The next DIY I'm going to be making is another spell book, but this one is going to be displayed open instead of using the cover for the display, so I'm not going to be doing anything to the cover at all. I just got a book from Dollar Tree and removed the plastic cover from the outside, and then um, I used a spray bottle with some water in it to spray just a little bit onto the edges of the pages to crinkle these up. And then I let that dry and while that was drying I went online and I found a couple of free printables and printed those out to use as um, pages in the book. Once that had dried I used a foam brush to paint some watered down brown acrylic paint over the sides of the book pages as well as the book pages themselves. I wanted to give them a darker and more um, distressed look and then I allowed that to dry. After that had dried then I cut out the printables that I had printed off online and I applied some Mod Podge to the back of these as well as the front and then I put these onto my book pages and I will link the website where I found these printables down below. They were free. I just um, googled it online and found these so if you want something like this but don't love these particular ones I'd recommend doing that. There's a lot of free options online and when I printed them they already did look distressed like this so I didn't have to do anything to the pages themselves. So this next DIY honestly did not really come from Dollar Tree, but I'm just going to tell you how I made it anyway in case you're interested. So I got a couple of these packs of sticks from Hobby Lobby to make a broom. And if you have a whole bunch of small twigs in your yard, you could probably use those as well. I just, I wanted this to be quicker and easier than collecting a whole bunch of miniature sticks. So I did find one really long stick in the yard and I used that as the main like broom handle and then I um, took a couple packs of the small twigs from Hobby Lobby and then my husband helped me hold this in place and then we wrapped some um, jute rope really tightly around all of the sticks to keep them in place onto the broom and this does have a little bit of fallout to it. It's not a perfect broom. Obviously, you're not going to be using it for sweeping or anything, but I think that if you're setting up like a witchy corner or display, that this adds a really authentic and spooky element. To finish off my witchy corner, I did add a few items that I made using my Cricut. I will also have these linked and available in my Etsy shop if you're interested, and those include this Old Salem's Black Hat Inn vinyl decal and also this it's October witches sign and these adorable mini signs. So thank you all so much for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed and I will talk to you all in my next one. Have a great day guys. Bye!